One of the bitter lessons that you learn growing up is that sometimes you don't know what you had until you lost it. Through doing my Rise and Fall videos, I grew a deeper appreciation for the shows as I learned more about the work that went into them and all the obstacles past to create an animated show. It's with that that I'd like to share one of my favorite episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog centered around Muriel. <laughs> The setup is simple. Eustace is blatantly ignoring his wife Muriel reading the newspaper and watching TV. Muriel is only asking for a very simple task. Pick up some vinegar so that she can start cooking dinner. Mind you, Eustace doesn't cook. Courage cooks. But Eustace doesn't like courage. Eustace bag! <laughs> oh. What? Can you go to the store and pick me up a bottle of vinegar? While I've already covered episodes like Perfect and The Mask, which are also good episodes of which The Mask does a good job at covering the dynamic between Eustace and Mirio, it is not always sunshines and daisies. Sometimes it takes a lot more for them to be on the same page, even for something simple, given that Eustace is already incredibly hard to work with, but also ask for a lot. We get no context as to why Eustace seems even more crabby today than he is in other episodes, so we kind of had to assume that he's just not in the mood, which doesn't sit right with Muriel. She stands in front of the TV, which causes more friction between the two. I'm hungry. Where's my food? this I don't think you're being very polite. <laughs> who cares what you think? And we know that Muriel is a kind and generous woman who Eusis is incredibly lucky to have, and sometimes it creates moments like these where Eusis needs to be humble. Mind you, Eusis doesn't even really have his mom, as his mom favors Courage a lot more in episodes like Mother's Day, where all he wanted was to be treated as good as Courage was treated. And maybe there's more to be said about that relationship that leads him to act the way that he does now, but it's just a trip to get vinegar. I don't believe that she's asking for so much. The episode episode perfectly sets up both characters in the light needed to have maximum effects, going further and further with both of them saying things in the heat of the moment. I think you're stubborn. Mm -hmm. Don't care! And I think you're being very nasty. Mm -hmm. Don't care! I've had it with you not caring what I think or say. <laughs> I'm not speaking anymore. Listen to the TV all you want. You won't be hearing from me again. You know he's gonna want to eat later, you just know it. He's lucky Courage doesn't have hands. I wish Courage would box Eustace the way that Matt from Wii Sports destroys people. But yes, as the episode's title would indicate, Muriel would stay muted until Eustace learns some manners, so you already know this is going to take some time. It goes through all the stages that you would expect, like the beginning stage where both sides appear very confident in their stance, with even Eustace giving that extra jab as Muriel goes upstairs, vowing that she'll keep her thoughts to herself, saying that her voice is not welcome in the house. What? I wasn't listening. Finally, a little piece of quiet. <laughs> I swear, if the rest of the episode was Courage beating up Eustace in a grocery store, this would have been the best episode of the series hands down. Now to those who would ask why Muriel didn't get it, or why she didn't ask Courage, you're missing the grand point here. Muriel getting it would validate the lack of respect that Eustace is giving Muriel. It's not that he's busy, because this old fart has nothing in his life going on, that he couldn't get off his lazy butt and do this one thing to help with the cooking that he would want later. So by Muriel doing it, it only incentivizes Eustace to continue this behavior. By having Courage do it, it's more of the same thing, however also it creates this double-edged sword for Eustace. If he allowed Courage to get the vinegar, then he'd only create a dynamic where Courage has more power because he's willing to do the things that Eustace would not do. If he doesn't let Courage get the vinegar as well, then he'd be shooting himself in the foot with the food that he'd ask for later. Which speaking of... Hey stupid dog, Muriel talking yet? Uh -uh. Well go get her to talk dog. I bought it off she's gonna make me breakfast. <coughs> <laughs> the episode cleverly has Universe communicate ways of telling Eustace that he's being a jerk. I would say much more, but given the subject matter that we'll be getting into later on, it doesn't really seem appropriate. However, nothing says stop being a jerk like a plate to the face, which should be legalized in a lot of states here, because there's a lot of people I've met that need that fine china to the nose. Not only that, but to ask Courage to fix your problems is another added jab. Eustace, either ignorant, confused, arrogant, or a vile pile of the three doesn't even understand the weight of me 
Muriel's decision to not do anything anymore. And there's many cartoons that do this, where a lot of things are sustained under one person. You have those episodes in which SpongeBob leaves the Krusty Krab for one reason or the other, and you learn that he actually helps out a lot. There is the episode in The Amazing World of Gumball, where Larry stopped working in the entire economy of Elmore Collapse. There is the episode in The Fairly Odd Parents, where we learned that if God kids don't make wishes in a large amount of time, the fairies would blow up. Sometimes the best way to figure out a character's worth is to remove them and see what happens. I, I don't know that. I don't know that That song is amazing, and I accept nothing less than that opinion. She refuses to speak, feeling disrespected and unappreciated specifically by Eustace. And the episode does a great job in making sure that Muriel's frustration is never taken out on courage. This is because Muriel has a great amount of self-control and emotional intelligence. I mean, you would need to, to be with someone whose head looks like a Monopoly boot piece. But also that Muriel has a lot of love for courage, and courage has a lot of love for Muriel, which is why he isn't trying to force Muriel to do anything. If anything, he's trying to get useless to apologize who is so angry that he can't believe I gotta buy me own breakfast uh, here. again universe science so courage picks up this weird phone like I've never seen this before you know I was born in 97 and I've never seen something like this before you know this feels like something that if there was a company out there who had a website that made a lot of lists a lot of top 10 lists about things that a certain decade would remember I feel like this would be on that list and Courage takes this weird thing and calls up Dr. Vindaloo. Totally the best doctor ever, not a doctor with a below average skill or anything. Courage tries to explain that Muriel has gone mute and he doesn't really have an idea of what to do. And you might be asking, Jay, why don't you wear pants? That answer is confidential. What you should be asking is why Courage is calling a doctor for this. Well, the answer to that would be, in my opinion, in my interpretation, that Courage doesn't really have that many people to reach out to besides debatably the computer. So Dr. Vindaloo states that when he wishes to help a patient, the one thing that he would need from the patient is to be able to explain the problem. And because Muriel is mute, his services cannot be requested because he would need them, and specifically them, the patient, to be able to explain the problem, which Muriel is unwilling to do. Your Muriel will not speak because of this stupid one. I will unleash forces which can only be stopped by the sound of your Muriel's voice. They do say that drastic times call for drastic measures. I'd also like to point out how direct this episode is. It's simple, straightforward, and to the point. Even with the character that doesn't even speak English for the most part. It's kind of why this review is straight to the point. He was this so caught up in his own head doesn't even realize what he has. And Muriel so saddened by the lack of cooperation doesn't even realize what Courage is about to do. So you may not have known about this character, but she is Shirley, a chihuahua fortune teller who doesn't have that many nice things to say about Eustace, never sparing a moment to comment on Eustace's greedy and stubborn behavior. She unleashes a great force that heads towards Courage's home that will crush everything within it and can only be stopped by Muriel's voice. And that sounds about right for a cartoon. Deep below the planet's shell, deeper than the deepest well may forces rise to break the ground and cause your muriel to sound <laughs> And with that, the monster is unleashed to wreak havoc on everything until Muriel speaks. The monster of this episode is the dark, looming future of never hearing Muriel speak again, but by force. The episode never forgets its cartoonish elements, like having the color scared off of Courage, having him create a gold egg out of nowhere, having the unicycle be lodged in his big head, or even having him run over clown shoes just because. These aren't things that in the grand scheme affect the episode, but it just gives these small elements that give just style and charm. It's what separates this from being live action or anime because it's so rooted in being silly and playing with characters' attributes and doing things that you would expect from a show targeted towards kids and families. I mean, it's a dog on a unicycle. That's just funny. Watch where you're going, you fool. That's also funny. The tension builds up nicely with Courage somehow outpacing this giant, abrasive, star-looking monster. He gets back home in a sloppy fashion that only Courage can pull off this way, and it really does make you think. If Courage doesn't get this curse removed, what kind of home would this become? Eustace would be permanently nasty to everyone, and Muriel wouldn't be around to humble him or offer love or generosity to anyone. And it really shows you how the world would lose a little bit of color without the kindness of Muriel. Think about everyone that he has reached out 
and interacted with within this episode. Either being snarky or asking for things in return, not being able to help, not wanting to do anything, not wanting to just reach for the stars, not doing everything that they possibly could, exhausting their resources, assuming things right off the bat, none of these things describe Muriel. It really shows you that Courage interacts with a lot of cold and distant and rude or all business people. And that provides a great contrast to Muriel's hospitality. In this sea of darkness, Muriel is that one light that refuses to not glow. So Courage tries to relay the current situation to Muriel with unsuccessful results. I don't remember any enemy. I'm talking now, and the sound of my voice will save the farm from getting destroyed. Will you quit that stupid hippie music? I'm trying to watch TV! And just like what would be common in episodes like this, there is a small breakthrough moment where things would be going well, but the other side is just so stubborn and not wanting to meet at least halfway, just meet halfway. And now we're back to square one. Also, by the way, this is a pretty notable scene within Courage, the show, because of that 3D animated part, fun fact. With not much time left, the monster approaches so close that the entire house starts shaking as the beast gets bigger and bigger each time you see it. The same behemoth that took down an entire city is here. And there is no doubt that if it reaches the house, everyone is done for. Courage does the logical thing and his last ditch effort and brings Muriel back upstairs to face the wrath of the force drawn towards them. Even staring in the face of doom, it is not worth it to her. Muriel is not complicated. All she wants is respect and for someone to listen to her and do these simple tasks. All she wanted was a trip to get vinegar. It's not the end of the world and now it is. She wasn't asking for anything abstract or subjective. She just wants Eustace to respect what she says and help her help him as once again, we're talking about food, which Eustace knows nothing about. Forget bowls, this man can't even cook up a bowl cut. <laughs> Unlike one course meal, him laying down here has a purpose. It's not a prank that went out of control and took a bizarre turn that felt out of place as a joke, but rather courage exhausting all of his options and understanding that there's really only one person in the city of nowhere that would make it worth being there. Without Muriel's warmness, kindness, hospitality, generosity, optimism, and beautiful voice, the city of nowhere is really that. Nowhere. Leak. I mean, would you want to live with just Eustace in a city of nowhere? Even with people like Eustace's mom, Ma Badge, who is nice to Courage. Deep down, she's also a wretched soul, and she shows her nastiness right in front of Courage to Eustace. So why not lie down? You can't fight it. You can run from it, sure, but for how long? It's always going to follow you, and it's going to destroy everything in your path. There's really nothing else left for you to do. When I think of some of the kindest characters in animation, there really aren't that many that are on the tier with Muriel. And I felt like this episode really presents that well. And given the unfortunate transition of Thea White, I also felt it was appropriate that if I can display any episode, why not the one where her voice saves the day and saves the world? It's so rich and distinct, and having it and her general warmness be what is needed for the day to be saved only seems right. From now on, when I talk, you listen. Got it? I said, is that clear? Eustace should consider himself lucky. Muriel carries around a rolling pin. What Muriel says does matter within the show, and I'm glad I can block out time to bring the show back up and celebrate the life of Thea White by talking about one of my favorite episodes involving her. It was so heartwarming to see the outpouring of support, and knowing what I know about the show when I did my rise and fall, it only gave me another opportunity to support. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Alpha out.